Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News with me, Labo Daniel. As mentioned earlier, I will be, I'm, I'm now joined by Ada Ibugo, House of Tara's um, what's commercial director. Nice to meet you, Ada. Now, just before you came on, we were talking, I was talking to TFD about um, the kind of structures that she's put in place in her business. And I do know that you, for example, came from a multinational to actually join the House of Tara um, movement. So can you tell me what you saw in a small and medium uh, enterprise that you thought, you know what, actually, I'm going to leave this global business that I work for, and I'm actually going to come and join in the vision? OK, um, that's an interesting question. So I met Tara about, I think, five years ago. And um, a mutual friend introduced us, and you know, I learned a little bit about the business and was quite impressed by it. So when she was putting a board together, she called me to say, can you come and be part of the board? And I remember being at the first meeting and thinking, this is an amazing business. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much more than makeup, you know, it's fantastic. I remember saying to my sister, I would actually love to work here. She was like, mm, come again. We need to just move back. You already want to go and work somewhere else. I was like, I was like but you don't understand. Can you mention where you used to work? Is it OK? I, I, yes, I really... well, I used to work at Diageo. And after Diageo, I joined the board when I was at Diageo. I moved from Diageo to Microsoft. And um, so I'd been on the board for about two years, I think, when I, was at, when I was at Microsoft. But it was an amazing business. You know, every board meeting was literally like a mini MBA class. <laughs> 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 and so, yeah, that, that's, that's really where it came from. And you know, just so, so much passion and amazing people in this business and the vision for the business, well, makeup didn't, didn't even cut it. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, speaking of visions for this business, I mean, the primary objective, because she was like, Labo, don't call me the queen of makeup. I empower <laughs> women. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the, the primary objective of this business is actually women empowerment, is to empower women. So why is women empowerment that important to you, TFD? Um, well, I think that sometimes, um, as a founder, you know, many of the things that you do and you express through your business is things that you're passionate about. And I think that's one of the things that makes it easier for you to run a business uh, because you're, you're working with your passion. And I think that women, anything to do with women, whether it's in terms of physical beautification or it's, it's in developing them to, to be all that they can be and more than they can be, um, that's what I'm passionate about. So I think it just comes with who I am and it's an extension of, of what I believe. Now, Ata, you said the business is more than makeup. So mm -hmm. what is the more? So, so much more. <laughs> I think like the least bit is the makeup, yeah, okay. I'm joking. But it's really is exactly what she just said. So, it, I mean, I've kind of shied away now from the word empowerment because everyone seems to be mm -hmm. used to using yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I tend to use the word impact. So when you look at this business, if for some reason Tara ever decided, I'm tired, I'm not doing this anymore, she can't. She wouldn't have a choice. She'd mm -hmm. have to continue because the amount of people that are impacted in the country and outside of this country because of the business. So we've got over 100 staff, for example, for starters, whose salaries are paid and <laughs> whose families are fed mm -hmm. off this business. We have almost 10,000 beauty entrepreneurs that we work with, makeup artists, makeup students, um, the, the beauty entrepreneurs for the conference we're having on Wednesday, which we formerly used to call the beauty reps, who literally trade this product, not to mention distributors and suppliers and manufacturers and retailers and wholesalers all over the country. So, yes, it's very much an impact business. The ripple if effect, if you sort of sat down with a mathematician and calculated how far reaching it would be if this business didn't, didn't, you know, didn't exist, the impact would be really quite significant. I remember when you know, Uber had problems in London recently, and yes. one of the reasons why they could challenge the decision and appeal for it was because of the impact it would have on the country yeah. in terms of jobs or you know, um, restaurants being affected and things like that. This is very much that, that sort of business. So, Makeup is just a platform for, for right. the impact, yeah. So TFD, does it upset you? Do you get angry when people still call you a makeup artist? <laughs> Kind of, yes. people still, you still have yeah, people who, yeah, who actually yeah, do yeah, that. They do Because that. based on what she has said, I mean, it's a, it's a huge, ecosystem, huge, yeah. yeah. Ecosystem. It is, it is significantly huge. And I, and I think that sometimes also people downplay the impact of what House of Tara has contributed to the beauty industry in Nigeria. I think that people, and sometimes people uh, feel that they need to minimize it also. Mm. Um, not to say that makeup artistry isn't a real job. It is a real job. And that's where I started from. And without being a makeup artist, I probably would not have the experience that I have in creating amazing products that we, we have now uh, as a brand. Uh, but it, it's, it's much more than it's much more than that. It's, it's a life that I've been impacted on. And, and that's how we measure our success at House of Tara. I remember when Ada first came, she, when I, when, when, just before she joined the organization, and we had a, we had a very heart-to-heart -heart conversation as to what, you know, what I felt would be the, the relevance of her being as part of the team. And she asked me, said, do you want to make money? <laughs> 
<laughs> and I said, why did you ask me that? She said, well, I haven't <laughs> spoken to any CEO who, who sounded least, who has talked least about money. And I, and I think that money is a byproduct. It would come uh, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And, and so it's not the main fo focus. But I think what I get the most satisfaction from is the number of lives that have been impacted. Um, as a business, I mean, I think, you know, um, when my dad joined the organization, passion was great, but also I put structure in place. By the time they came in to join, they had seen the processes that had been put in place. And one of the things was for me with, with, with her was, you, you're also coming from a structured organization, yes. so you can better understand why I'm making so much of, so much of a fuss uh, about that. I don't know whether you want to yeah. share some of You know, people thoughts. often come to house time, maybe just for a meeting of people who work with us, and they're like, it's really amazing how here everybody has a job. Like you say something and they're like, oh, that's so so and so's job. They're like, you don't usually get that. They just say, hey, call Bola there, <laughs> you know, or something. And things are documented, you know. I mean, th th there is some work that we're constantly doing, like all companies, we're constantly evolving. But, you know, everything is documented, everything is written down. You're hardly going to call a house attire staff and ask them something very, I don't know, about some rhythm or rhyme that we do daily or weekly. And then they say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just okay. won't happen. It's kind of like she said in the in the DNA of mm -hmm. everybody, of, how of, we do things. Yeah. I can testify because, I mean, yeah. any time I go to a house of terror, whether it's one in Lekki, whether it's in Abuja, when I travel to Abuja or Potakot, it's almost like I walk into the same place because it's like, you know, welcome yeah. to house of terror. Yeah. It's always, yeah. I'm like, okay, all right, I'm here. <laughs> um, so you have this program coming up because I have a video that we'll just play for it um, where you actually want to teach oh, a thousand um, you, you say you no longer call them beauty reps, but beauty entrepreneurs. Right. You want to teach a thousand beauty entrepreneurs how to be able to run their businesses just like you're doing so that they can become big. So we'll just play the video now and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Wow. <laughs> so just tell us a bit more about this, this event that you're having on Wednesday. Okay. So like I said, we have these beauty entrepreneurs. When we first came up with the event, we wanted to be exclusive for beauty entrepreneurs because we worship our beauty entrepreneurs. Like they're like our number one people. And we wanted something exclusive for them so that they could learn, of course, they could be celebrated and they get some awards. We've actually just opened it up to non-beauty entrepreneurs, but I think we have very limited spaces okay. for them to also attend on Wednesday. But the whole day, like you just saw on the video, they will have actual makeup masterclasses. There will be talks from people like the chairman of First Bank, um, from Lagos State as well about funding. You know, just lots of tips and tricks on how to run their business. It is literally a crash MBA course for beauty <laughs> entrepreneurs in one day. And then, just in case that's not enough, you now have an award ceremony in the evening endorsed by lots of various... Um, sort of bit enterprising celebrities who are giving out the, the awards. So I think, I think 13 or 16 of our, of our huge entrepreneurs okay. who have achieved, you know, greatly over the years. So it's a, it's an, it, it will be an electric day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, I, I saw people from across but all industries. So I saw Ms. Boabudu, I saw Omoni Oboli, and I saw several people. So what I take kind of from this is, no matter the industry that you're in, mm. it's still the same best practices across board. Yeah. So you need the right skills. You need the same skills for each and every one um, of these industries, essentially. So it's not just, oh, it's not just, look, I'm getting a makeup box. No, I need to create <laughs> um, structures business, and systems yes. in, in here. Um, then also, one thing I will ask is, and based on your experience mm. also with the beauty entrepreneurs, mm. what would you say the greatest challenges for mm. several female entrepreneurs are? Mm. I would honestly say it's that sort of balance between creative mm -hmm. and business. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're creatives first. That's what comes naturally to them. That's their passion. And I think what's interesting about our business is we don't just sell you products and say, off you go, go and sell it. Please come back and buy more when you're ready. No, we teach you how to run your business, so down to financing, how you even apply for loans, you know, how you put systems and processes in place, because 
we've over the years built up and perfect well almost perfected all these things mm -hmm. so there's nothing wrong with the, with the knowledge sherry you know tara is very very big on sharing knowledge, huge yes. on sharing knowledge. Yes. So she's like, let's give him everything. I'm like, no, but let's keep small of that <laughs> for ourselves. She's like, no, Ada, let's, let's share the knowledge. It's not going to leave us because we share it or whatever. So they really do get that expertise. We have an amazing operations director who's, you know, who's at hand to teach them sort of systems and processes. I'm there as if you really want to make money, you know, the original evil girl. <laughs> if you really want to make money, I can teach you how to do that. Tara's just there all the time. If you say it's a British entrepreneur that needs something, where are they? You know, <laughs> let's mm -hmm. do that. So mm -hmm. it's a very, very supportive business. And we do help them a lot with structure and kind of being focused on their business, not just on take now, products do and you go. Think, TFD, do you think that the makeup industry is highly oversaturated? No. Why do you say that? Nigeria is a huge country. Mm -hmm. It's not saturated. We, we need more makeup artists. <laughs> uh, we need more makeup artists. Uh, we don't have a strong retail structure that supports distribution. So we need lots of people. And one of the ways uh, products are distributed in Nigeria is, is uh, through one-on-one -on -one interactions with, between a makeup artist and um, their client. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a medium as well. It's not just... A, uh, the makeup artistry is also a medium for distribution. And, and so it's, I don't think it's oversaturated. I think that people are getting, um, having these thoughts mm -hmm. about it being oversaturated, but definitely yeah, not. Yeah, because I know, because everyone's like, has it kind of reached its tipping point where it's mm -hmm. now coming down? You think there's so much there's more room? So much more, so there's much more. more. There's so, so much more. It's just, not, and not just in the makeup artistry, but also the business in terms of distribution. That's another angle that hasn't huge. yet been huge that hasn't yet been maximized nice and the country is actually very very big. even we make i mean i was i was at house of tara i was it on saturday because my colleague toyas phillips got married mm -hmm. on saturday mm -hmm. and i wanted to just quickly rush in to mm -hmm. do my makeup and i saw the <laughs> <laughs> i saw the queue of people i said i just so i mean there's mm -hmm. there's still so much yeah, there's yeah, still yeah. so much we also have, we also also have a huge wedding culture in nigeria mm -hmm. um in lagos especially there's a lot of events being done you know and there will still be need uh, for, for makeup artistry. But yeah. when is, when is, when would you say, and, and this is for both of you, uh, maybe you could take it first, when is too much too much with makeup? Like, for example, it's not your wedding. Why do you have to go and do makeup <laughs> to go there? Why do you have to look better than the bride? When is too much there's too nothing, much for Nigeria? Nothing, there's nothing like too much. <laughs> okay. I think everyone, it's important for everyone to put, put their best foot forward. Okay. It's not, it's not about trying to be more beautiful than the bride. You could never be more beautiful than the bride mm -hmm. because there's a joy that comes with you being the bride. There's a joy of having a white dress or a cream dress or whatever. There's a joy of being the center of attention and being in love. So even if I dressed up and wore, even if I wore a white dress as mm -hmm. well, I would <laughs> never be the bride. So mm -hmm. I think all this fuss about, or oh, what <laughs> is too much is too mm -hmm. much. There's nothing like that. <laughs> Look as grand as you can because you're coming for my wedding and I'm happy because mm -hmm. I think that you've taken the time yes. Um, to to put yourself together. So I don't think it's nothing like, there's nothing like that. <laughs> I would echo that and I would say it's up to the individual. So what might be too much for me might not be too much for you. And it really is just up to individual style and, and taste. And if you're comfortable with it and you feel great in it, then it's fine. Let the lashes be like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I mean, like. again, it just empowers you, to be honest. It gives you self-confidence because you always, yeah. it's so much more, more than, than makeup. Yeah. Like yeah. it's yeah. so yeah. much yeah. more. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it, it makes people actually conquer the world, like literally. Yes, so yes, yes. If, if that's yeah. what it takes, then please. And it's from inside out, right? Mm. And so if you, and if, as long as it's from inside out, then you feel, and, and we need that. We need that in a very difficult country, in the, you know, with the recession mm. and all those things. <laughs> the little things that makeup yeah, artists good, are yeah. uh, magicians and they're doing yeah. a phenomenal job, if you ask me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, TFD, let's talk a bit more about, about your TFD series. Uh, again, as, as Ada said, when it comes to, why can't we just keep some of these things to ourselves? <laughs> like you, you are very big on, look, this knowledge, let's just share it. Like, let's, let me give you everything, everything that I have. Um, you even have some people who have worked under you, who have worked for House of Tara, who now have their own makeup lines. I mean, we had one of them here, Hega and Esther, and mm. I can't remember what we're talking about. And she goes, you know, TFD always says, I'm not her competition. Mm. So you, you don't, for you, you're not... How do you see competition? Let me put it that way. Let me try to phrase it that way. Because people see, oh no, you know, these two people have been pit against each other. I don't like you, you're in the same. How do you look at that whole sphere in the industry? I, I, I think that uh, my, my I, you know, I don't believe in competition and that's my, and that's my stance. Um, and but one of the things I think is if we were created and all of us have such unique iris or unique fingerprints 
and then there's X billion of billion people in the world and none of us have the same iris, none of us have the same fingerprint, that there must be something special that we all bring to the table. And if we focus on the thing that we bring, that thing that I bring specially to the, to the world, if I focus on that, then I don't consider you a competition because you be if you could just focus on that thing that it makes you different, that makes okay. you special, okay. then there'll be no basis for competition. Um, and, I, and I think that sometimes it's not even healthy. Um, I think that what the feeling you get when you feel that someone is competing with you, it's not a... I don't consider it a healthy feeling. And as long as it's not a healthy feeling, then I don't consider it a good thing. Uh, and so I'd rather focus on, my, on, on me and what I want to do. I focus on um, what is it I'm trying to achieve. I focus more on how can I get better than I currently am and improve on myself, as opposed to say, this person is doing X. So therefore, it's going to determine whether I consider myself a success or a failure. I just think the entire... Um, competition thing is, is, is for me, it's, it's negative as opposed to positive. Uh, collaboration for me is if I can bring my specialty and you bring your specialty and yes, you combine that together. Yes, which was why I was surprised at the GD collaboration because I was, I was thinking you can do your own, you can do your own glitters. Yes. No, you didn't have to do that. Yes, yes, but, but you just thought. But it's like I said, your uniqueness and my uniqueness, mm. your brand uniqueness and my brand uniqueness. Can, be, can bring something special to the table. And that's what I, that, uh, that I think is more, is healthy. I think collaboration is healthy, but I think competition isn't healthy. And as long as it's not a healthy feeling, then I don't want to participate in it. Mm. So you just, but then again, there's something called, is it, is it you or is it FD? Mm -hmm. Environmental scanning, because you need to know what's happening in the market. Oh, definitely. Course, yeah. Environmental scanning, is FD that says that, that uh, fella, that says environmental scanning. Yes, it's good to know what's happening around you. Um, it's important to know that Arise TV is here. It's important to know that uh, uh, um, a new makeup line has, has just come into, into the market and this is what they're offering. It's good to know because I'm a knowledge seeker anyway, mm -hmm. so it's not a big deal. But that doesn't mean that that will then shape what decisions I then take. But how about when, you, oh, I wanted that deal, that person got it. Oh, how could she, like, I, and this may not necessarily be, but how can a person who is in that space, mm. who is saying, oh my goodness, you know, they got that deal again. Why didn't I get that deal? Because as so, a human so, being, so, sometimes... Sometimes yeah. I think that it's because we haven't <coughs> focused on what is, what is special about us yeah. so that it makes us distinct. And so I always emphasize on discovering what it is that makes you special and then sticking with what makes you special as opposed to trying to, and sometimes because you haven't stuck with what, what makes you distinct, when people want to make comparisons, because your, your distinction, your distinctness isn't coming through, it's easier for them to, to pick up some, somebody else. In some cases, that person who you said they've picked, or that person that has picked this person who you consider as your competition, is not the person you should be collaborating with because they are, there's no um, uniformity. Mm. In, their, in your both, both values, no synergy, in, yeah. no synergy. And sometimes that's the reason why they're not working with you. So I see things from that standpoint. Okay. And I think it's difficult for many people because they're so, I think the, the news and the conversations of competition has been so broadly spoken mm -hmm. by such strong voices mm -hmm. that people are more, they feel that information is, is more out there than what I'm saying currently. But I've met a few people who don't believe in it. And I'm happy that may, maybe very soon, this will become mainstream as opposed to um, just one or two people. Okay. Now, Ada, you as the commercial director, I, and I, I hear her, I hear everything she has said, um, and I don't know how it really operates in House of Tara, but I'm assuming that you have targets, you, you really go out to see what's, what's, what's out there. Do you, are you of the same opinion as, you know, let's, let's just, it's not that deep. So Everybody choose your path. My job is to kill competition. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But I did, I did come in like that. You see, I worked at Dior, kill Chanel. I worked at Microsoft, kill Google. I worked at, you know, Guinness, kill MBL. It's what I know. Mm -hmm. It's to kill competition. <laughs> so I get to House of Town, and I'm like, who are we going to kill? She's like, no, we don't do that. I'm like, what do you mean? Who's the competition? <laughs> Let's stick them out. She's like, no, we don't do that. We tend to work with the competition to mm -hmm. do things. I have to go home, scratch my head for a few days, come back, think about it, argue about with her about this back and forth. But she's she's absolutely right. I think particularly in our industry, there's so much beauty in the collaboration, so much opportunity for collaboration. And actually, it's a it's a much smarter and, like she said, a much healthier way to do business. You know, if you do focus on the competition, they say if you're constantly chasing someone, then you'll always be behind them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and, and that's kind of just what sticks in my mind all the time. And she's right. Stick to your, what, what you're good at, what your strength is, what your focus is, and your tribe will come to you because they like you for that thing. So, mm -hmm. yes, I'm a convert.
Like, Tia, did you have any openings in House of Tara? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you've done a great job with her. <laughs> any final words um, for, for Wednesday's event? Final words? Like I said, it's going to be electrifying. I think it's going to be so much fun. Um, and I look forward to seeing all the reps because it's, they're, they're, I'm very passionate about them. All righty. Same yeah, thing? Same thing. Everything Tara said. Just come. Great day. It'll okay. be amazing. <laughs> all right. Uh, it's now time for a short break on the morning show, but when we return, I'll finally be speaking with the ladies of the SME Boutique Women's Exclusive Club on Financing and SME. Don't go away.